checking the valves today on my Husqvarna SMR 510, so I figured I'd record it. Really don't need many tools to do the job. Basic hand tools, obviously a shim kit, but everything else everybody should have lying around the house. If you have one of these bikes, I highly recommend buying the complete hot cam shim kit because you go to adjust your valves and then you don't have the right size shim, you're kind of screwed and then you have to order it. I think this kit's like 90 bucks online and it's pretty worth it. So first things first, we're gonna take the seat, side plastics and tank off and then we'll pick up from there. Okay, now that we have that off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the spark plug, remove this and remove the fan off the radiator so the uh, valve cover can clear out. Uh, it's recommended that this is done on a completely cold motor. Do not do it when your motor is warm, hot, or in between. I recommend waiting at least 24 hours after last startup before doing this just to make sure that your motor is in fact cool and uh, you won't have any problems. So we're gonna go ahead and get that stuff off and then pick up from there. Now that, that stuff's out of the way, the next thing you wanna do is remove the manual decompression lever cable and the breather tube off of the head cover. It's just a 10 millimeter nut here. Loosen that up. Spin that nut up. Once you have it loose, you can go ahead and unthread the cable from the head. It's threaded into the head right there. Spin it up. It's going to pull it up with it. Pull up. Sorry, it's kind of hard to do with one hand. Push up and then you can just lift it out of the holder there. Just like that. And this just slides right out. Just like that. Tuck it up on the way. This, you can just pull it right out. Now we're gonna go ahead and loosen these eight millimeter bolts holding the valve cover on. Okay, now that that's out of the, the bolts are out, you can just lift up on this cover. It might be a little stuck with the gasket. There, we go. there it goes. You don't really wanna put a screwdriver in there and pry against the valve cover or the surface of the top of the head because it won't seal after that. And now just take this, and you gotta be a little finicky with it, and just, again, it's kinda hard to do one-handed, but it'll come out, you just gotta slowly work it out. There it goes. And then you can just lift it up, and pull it right out of there. Set that aside. Now we can see the valves. There they are. Well, you can, excuse me, they see the cams. The valves are obviously up under there. But now I'm gonna show you how to get in a top dead center. If you could see that mark in the head right there, that mark, you wanna line up with the two dots on this, this gear right here. The one with the white paint on it, that's not the mark. It's two dots. And to do that, you need to put the bike into gear, spin the rear tire until those two dots line up. And you wanna make sure it's on the compression stroke so you can look at the cams here and see which way the lobes are pointing. They should be pointing opposite directions of each other. Or you can stick a screwdriver down the spark plug well. So we're gonna go ahead and get that in top dead center and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now we have the piston top dead center. You could tell by the mark in the head and the mark on the cam gear that those are lined up. And you see the cam lobes are pointing in opposite directions of each other. One's pointing to the left and one's pointing to the right. I don't know if you could be able to see it, but the piston's also at top dead center. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that. Piston's also at top dead center, you can verify that take a thin screwdriver, put it down there, and then move the rear tire back and forth. And you should see it go up. And then once it hits that mark, it should start coming back down. You wanna get it right where it stops at the highest point. And it should line up with 
those marks right there. So now we're going to uh, go ahead and actually check the valve clearances. So on an 08 Husky SMR 510, the, the intake valve clearance is 0.004 to 006 inches and the exhaust is 0.006 to 0 0.008 inches. To check them, you want to take a feeler gauge. This is a 0 0.008 inch feeler gauge. So the maximum limit of the valve clearance. And insert it between this rocker arm and the valve. You can actually see right there below the rocker arm, you can actually see the uh, shim right below sorry right there the little round thing so we're gonna head and insert this in now if this doesn't fit we're within the max clearance but it might be too tight so we're then we're gonna go smaller and this cannot get it in between there so that's good we're gonna check the other one. Since we already have the .08 out, we're gonna slip, try to slip that in. Let's see if we can. And that slips in. It's a little tight, but it's, it still fits, so we might have to adjust that sh shim. It's, it's good that these are loose, well, that this one's loose. You don't want them tight. Tight valves are worse than loose valves. So we're going to uh, go down a size on this left exhaust valve and see if we can get uh, 0 .007 in there. Okay. The 0 .007 slips in, but it's, it's pretty tight. but it does slip in, so that's good. We'll check the 006, see how that feels. So now we got the 006 inch feeler gauge. We're gonna slip that in. And that also sli obviously slips in, but that really is, this valve is perfect. Don't want it any tighter, and I definitely wouldn't want it any looser, so. We're gonna see if we can get a .09 in that one. And if we can't, I'll probably just leave it. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, we have the 009, and that also fits in there. So I think we're gonna have to adjust this shim, go down one size. But it's a good idea to write down what you're getting on every valve, so that way you don't forget. But we're going to go ahead and check the intake, which is 0.004 to 0 0.006, see what we get, and then we're going to make all our adjustments. Okay, so after checking the intake, I could fit a 0 0.007 on this valve and a 0 0.005 on this one. So this valve is good. We don't need to adjust this one. I believe this one needs to bump up one more size, as well as this exhaust valve it needs to bump up one more shim size. So I'm going to show you how to do that on the exhaust side. It's exactly the same on the intake. There is no difference. It's just I can get a better camera view of this one. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so to, uh, to actually remove a shim and change sizes, inside there's this retainer clip right there that keeps the rocker arms in place. This is where a pick comes in handy or even if you can get a, get a pair of... Uh, needle nose pliers in here to grab that tab. I usually use a pick and slide to the hole and then pull up. So we're going to see if we can do that real quick. Now you can see that's out. What you could do is get your finger in there and you can actually slide the rocker arm right off the shim and that just falls out of the way. Now you can see the shim. And that shim is a 2.20 it looks like. So we're gonna get a little magnet and fish that out of there.
There's the shim. So we're gonna go ahead and bump up one size. So I'm pretty sure this is a 2.20. Yep, so we're gonna go to a 2.25. So to get the new shim in, what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of assembly lube, put it on a, a stiffer feeler gauge. You don't need super stiff because you do want it to bend a little bit, but put it on there and it'll stick right to the feeler gauge. And then all you do, see if I can do this. Put it in there and just try to give it a little pressure downwards and slip it right into place, just like that. Take your finger, make sure it's all the way down. Okay, it is. You want to pick up your rocker arm and slide your rocker arm back over on top of the shim. And now we're going to check the clearance of that valve, and if it's in 0 0.006 to 0 0.008, we're good to go. Here's a 0 0.008. Let's see if that slips in there. Nope. Can't get that in there, which is what you want. Let me see if I can get a 0.07 in there. 0 0.07. And that goes in, but it's, it's pretty tight. It's definitely tight. Let's try 0 0.06. Okay, the 0 0.06 slips right in. So this valve is within spec. It's the exact same on the intake if you have to adjust the intake side. So I'm not going to show you that because it'd just be super repetitive. And that's it. And from there, you would I would do again. I would go over and check all the valves again to make sure that you got them all and that they're all within spec. Go ahead. Put everything back in, reverse it the way you took it off, start her up, see how she sounds. Here's what that clip looks like that I pulled out that holds the rocker arms into place. Don't forget to put this back in. If you do not put this back in, your rocker arm is going to slide over, your valve is going to stay down up, and you're going to have a bad day. So do not forget to put this back in. I almost did, so don't be like me. It goes right there. Push down, you'll hear it click. I like to stick my, after I get in there, I like to stick my finger, make sure it's all the way down. See if you can see the intake side. Yeah, there you can see it. it. Sits just on there right there and just keeps both rocker arms where they need to be. So make sure you put that back in. All right, here we go. We're gonna start her up. After the valve adjustment, sounds good and that's it if you guys have any questions please leave it in the comments I'll be happy to help anybody I can but I uh, appreciate you guys for watching remember to like comment and subscribe and see you next time